Hey everybody, welcome to Lude Presents. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the new things we're working on and have coming out. You don't want to miss it. Lude was built for the audience, with the audience, by the audience. It's for those up and coming content creators who want a chance. It's for those audience members who want to be on the show and chat about their favorite subject. For those investors, sponsors, maybe who want to get in at the ground level. You know, Lude is grassroots. Lude is started from the bottom. 16 subscribers, we need way more than that. So we likely aren't the first to do show like this, but I'll bet we're the first to do it this way. It's a place to have fun. It's just a lewd. Now, with that being said, enjoy the newest episode. Hold my tongue, never. I say what I feel. Look you in the eye, never ran, never will. Hold my own destiny, both hands in the wheel. In the darkness, they found light. So at the top of your lungs, scream, this ain't life. So when they move left, you move right. You move right. Hold my tongue, never. I say what I feel. Look you in the eye, never ran, never will. Hold my own destiny, both hands in the wheel. Welcome to Lude Presents Rabbit Holes. So we are joined by another special guest here tonight. Um, Ryan Edwards. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. Of course. It's a pleasure being here. All right. Good to hear. So, you know, I'm going to let Ryan kind of talk about, you know, his background and research and what he does, where he's at, and then uh, I'll kind of lead us right into the show here. So, Ryan, go ahead and give a little intro of yourself there. Of course. My name is Ryan Edwards. I'm a cryptozoologist from uh, San Antonio, Texas. And in case anyone that does not know what cryptozoology is, which I can understand, it's a very niche subject. It's a study of unknown animals. Uh, most people think like Bigfoot, Yeti, Loch Ness Monster, creatures like that. I've been doing research into these creatures and this phenomena for over 10 years. Now. I have a book out, I've done podcasts, I've done, I've interviewed eyewitnesses, things like that. I've done field research into these creatures. So I guess where can where can the audience find you? Do you have a Twitter or a YouTube channel or anything like that? Twitter, I try to stay away from Twitter because that's negativity. <laughs> but Facebook, I have Facebook, okay. uh, Instagram, I have YouTube. But if you look up the Crypto Chronicles on YouTube, that's my podcast. I okay. also have a book. So Cryptid Chronicles on YouTube. Find them there, folks. And I got your information through Tex, you know, from Texas Front Porch. And I reached out to you and we kind of, you know, thought it would be fun to have you on. So here we are. So shout out Tex. <laughs> but the reason you're on is because I want to kind of explain to you and to the audience, like what we're going to do on the, these shows of the rabbit holes episodes. So, um, you know, basically we're going to, we're going to be interactive with our audience, whoever listens, you know, the things that they maybe want to hear about, we're going to, we're going to talk about or try to talk about. So I want them to be able to give us those things and then we can reach out to an expert, you know, in whatever that is and have them on the show and talk about it because we all want to learn. This is like, uh, this is higher education. This is just past 12th grade. You can come into this kind of research, just hearing what's out there information. You're not going to see on front page news, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and then we'll make some episodes out of that. So, that's where we're going with this. But first, I just <laughs> I want uh, to share some things you know a little bit about. So um, you had told me uh, how you can relate paleontology to the cryptozoology field. So I'll give you the stage and let you kind of give me some information on that. I may ask some questions and we'll just kind of go back and forth here for a little while. So let's let's hear it. Of course. With me, I have a background in paleontology. I've done research into it for several years now. And there's several correlations between these cryptids and the fossil record. For instance, uh, if you take Bigfoot, for instance, a lot of people say, well, Bigfoot can't be real. It's some type of giant human-like ape. Well, we've had that in the past. We have Gigantopithecus, a giant right. uh, half a ton ape that was found in China. Yeah, we, we brought that animal up here on the episodes in the past. Yeah. Then you have like creatures that are seen in America. You have the Wahila. People describe it as almost like a bear or wolf hybrid. And of course, that's really peculiar until we look at the fossil record. We have the Amphicyonidae, or also known as the bear dogs. They are a mixture of both canine and Ursidinian characteristics. Not to mention the 
the litany of what we call Lazarus Taxon seen throughout the world. These are creatures that are believed to be extinct, but are still seen in the modern day. Animals like the thylacine, the thylacaleo, uh, even uh, giant ground sloths. And of course, we have the living dinosaur phenomena and also the living pterosaur phenomena. So, so that back to that point there. So they're, where are they finding these animals then that they're claiming aren't, but are, are these like remote islands or where, where are these at? Yes, usually remote areas. Uh, one okay. of the most famous instances is the coelacanth. That was discovered in the Indian Ocean back in the 1930s. Through paleontology, you can see if these cryptids are more realistic within the paleontological world and the fossil record, or if they are just kind of truly outlandish creatures and right. see the reality of it. So, I mean, let's let's hear, like, I mean, I, you have to understand a lot of the audience is not going to know these topics. So if we were to talk on like a fifth grade level, explain to me like on a fifth grade level. <laughs> and I know that's silly, but how bones relate to say, let's just use Bigfoot. Let's use Bigfoot. Of course. Uh, Bigfoot, a large, pretty much basic description. You think of large, hairy, human-like creatures seen in the woods in North America. Mm -hmm. that, that's where we were. Yep. Yeah. And then once you think about that, you realize there have been hairy humanoids in the past. If you look at our own evolutionary history, we have what you call Australopithecines and Pratipus. They were described as smaller. Uh, think of if you saw an Australopithecine, you probably would have thought, well, that's a weird looking chimp. Mm -hmm. Pretty much mm -hmm. bipedal ape almost, but they're still in our evolutionary track, evolution. Right. But then if you think about that, you're like, okay, so hey, human humans have existed in our past. Why can't they exist in our present? And you see this correlation between the anatomy, for instance. Like the foot structure of these osteopathicines is very similar to like big footprints in around the world. Uh, one thing with Bigfoot is they have what you call a sagittal crest. It's like the, the head's pointy, people describe. Right. And that's something that's present within our early ancestors and apes in general. And there's certain characteristics that they have that correlate to our, our own prehistory. Does that demonstrate that they are something that was along our own evolutionary line? Does it show that they are something that maybe convergently evolved alongside us? We do not know for sure, since we don't have a body or genetic evidence, because morphology or how a creature looks doesn't necessarily show a genotypic correlation or that they truly are related. Something I like to bring up is like rabbits and chihuahuas. They're both small, furry, and have big ears. They are no way related to each other. So right. just because something looks alike doesn't mean they are truly alike. Right. That's a valid that's a valid point. That's a valid point. Um back to where we just were there, um I had asked I think I asked Text. Uh, I talked about it with someone else too, and I was just, you know, giving them the counterpoint to something. I brought up, well, why haven't we found the bones of these, you know, cryptids like Bigfoot? And they kind of, you know, they said about how, you know, wildlife and, you know, they bury their own things like that. But like, isn't there something somewhere? Like, how is there not anything we can find? You know? Well, if you look at True, does paleontology and also does animal biology. Fossilization is a very rare occurrence. It's amazing that we have the fossil record that we have. Uh, most fossils that we we find around the world are mostly from the same areas. And that's due to maybe like a natural death trap or something like that that was there in prehistory. The liberated carpet, for instance. And for instance, with uh, primates, we only most. Most well good, well uh, high named uh, primatologists will say we only know about eight to ten percent of all primates that ever existed, and that is present and past. And it's a there's a little saying in paleoanthropology and human evolution that you can fit all human ancestor bones in a shoebox because it's just we don't find a lot. It's just simply because it's either if it's underground, maybe we built over it. Or maybe when they die, they went in a cave and it's hard to get to. It. So with and, these ideas of not finding bones, it's well, it, it's a good 
the reason that we don't find them because it's, it's a rare occurrence to find a bone. Yeah, and then, you know, to the point that one of them had said, I mean, you know, if it were there long enough, it would decay. And what we find, you just don't know what it is, maybe. Because they mentioned how the DNA, could, one of them said how the DNA could just be one of the uninterpreted DNAs where they can't get enough uh, digits of the DNA to make a, a match. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. So is that possibly what's going on? It's a possibility. If we don't have enough alleles in the data set within the DNA strand, if we're missing a couple of A's, a couple of T's, right. we can identify it. But right. what they do is they just say, well, it's an identified uh, species, but if there's not enough data, we can't say if that was a primate, if that was a deer, if that was a bear. Okay. And sometimes, they're so similar to humans, people just say, well, it's human. And that's simply because the data is probably so similar to human DNA. Like, so is it possible that some of the unknown victims with the Jane Doe DNA, it was animal blood and that's not really the person? Is that possible? I just made that up. But. It's, uh, well, most, uh, when most uh, laboratories, the mixing, uh, the mess identification of human DNA and animal DNA is very, very uncommon. Okay. It's just because okay. the amount of differences. If it was maybe okay. a primate, then possibly, because it's a little bit more closely related to us. Okay. All right. So, uh, Ryan, so what about uh, evidence, like just evidence in general about cryptids? Like what, what's out there? What, what can people know? And where can they find that stuff? Of course. Well, it depends on really the cryptid you're talking about. There's a litany of them we've seen around the world. But mostly evidence that consists of cryptids, it's anecdotal. Things like eyewitness accounts, uh, historical sightings, uh, newspaper clippings from the 1900s. Uh, that's the type of evidence we mostly collect, cryptozoologists. Uh, like some cryptids might uh, have been talked about for centuries by uh, indigenous populations, but then in modern day are no longer seen. That might demonstrate maybe it's just a uh, maybe a folklore creature maybe it's because it went extinct we don't know for sure but a lot of the evidence we are finding of these creatures is just it's truly just anecdotal it's not dna or anything like that unless you were talking about something like bigfoot or sasquatch you're talking about more trace evidence things like footprint casts uh videos uh recordings that are, are outside of the human octave scale there so is my yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, right there is a good valid question I have. And I, you know, I think it'd be good if we went there. Um, so Bigfoot. Is Bigfoot in the South the same as the, the Bigfoot in the Northwest, as the Northeast, as the Southwest? Is it like one species of animal? And if that's the case or, you know, if it's different, tell me or like, what would the population be if that is the case? Of course, that's a very valid question. It, it, this uh, answer just depends on the researcher. With me personally, I believe all these animals are being seen are the same species. Some okay. people will speculate that there might be subspecies or it's a different species in general, but I believe it's the same one. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing, I believe, are what we call ecomorphs. The same species, but due to the difference in ecology or ecosystem, they are morphologically a little different. For instance, the Bigfoot seen here down here in the south, they are they're smaller than the ones up in the Pacific Northwest, and that might be simply due to the lack of environmental uh, environment down here. There's a lot more human habitation, there's a lot less uh, ecological resources, so mm -hmm. they might be smaller. Maybe hair color might be different. They, they seem to be more kind of reddish brown here in the south, in the south than okay. more black, dark brown in the north, in the northeast, and northwest. It doesn't identify maybe a different species, but just variation of the same species, which is something okay. you, you find common within primates. All right. So I have another question from that that we talked about on one of the other ones. And, you know, it's I brought up like the the world's uh, national forests. Is it possible that the national forests from Roosevelt have something to do with, like, you know, Bigfoot or something like that? Uh, like, trying to say maybe Roosevelt, but the other Bigfoot within the national forests or national parks? 
Yeah, so I think we were talking along the lines of, um, I asked, like, were the national parks possibly for that? And I think Tex told us about how Roosevelt was friends with a taxidermal or a taxologist or what, you know, taxidermy. Yeah. Um, and the taxidermy knew about the Bigfoot or Teddy Roosevelt knew about the Bigfoot. So he started creating the national parks. That, since there's no real evidence for it, I would say that it's a possibility. But okay. It's possible. you, it, it, okay. You don't know anything about that, though. Okay. Yeah. Because Teddy Roosevelt does write about a Bigfoot sighting uh, someone had back in the 1800s. Because if okay. you read, uh, I believe it's The Wilderness Hunter, there's something called Bowman's Story, which is a story about a hunter out in the Dakotas, and he's attacked, and his uh, hunting partner is attacked by this weird, hairy, wild man creature. And this might be one of the first ever recorded, like, Bigfoot, uh, Bigfoot sightings within the literature, and it was taking, but it was taking nothing but more of like a monster story. What, but, uh, can, can you name that story again? Uh, Bauman's story. It's from the Wilderness Hunter. Okay. That's interesting. I would probably read something like that. I probably will. We'll, <laughs> we'll pick back up here, but, you know, now we, let's just go back out somewhere else. Um, let's cool. kind of, uh, what, where's another good one we can go from here? I know you're like, good cryptid, that. Right. Wherever you want to take us. Take us well, on a ride. Of course. Well, let's think about cryptids and if we're talking about maybe the false record, there's mm -hmm. one particular group of cryptids I've done a good amount of research into, and that's called the proto pygmies. These proto pygmies are small Bigfoot like creatures seen around the world. Uh, they're usually described between three to five feet tall, covered in hair, sometimes have very archaic tools, maybe have the use of the fire, but most sightings don't report them. And they're just kind of little hairy humanoids. And these are from, you have the Agugui of East Africa, you have the Nguni Wung of Vietnam, or also called the Rocky. You have the uh, Baramanu of uh, Afghanistan, and you have, like, even here in America, you have what they call the Red Man, the Little Man of the Red River Delta. And these little, short, little, like what they call little foot sometimes, highly correlate to our fossil record as well. Like the Australopithecines and the Paranthropines I talked about earlier. A lot of people suspect these creatures are surviving human ancestors that have survived into the modern day. And people believe this might have happened elsewhere as well, but with other human ancestors. For instance, in, Af in up in a uh, even Russia and the Caucasus Mountains, there's stories of the Almasti or the Almas, uh, the wild man of the woods. And people that see this creature, they don't, they don't describe it like the Bigfoot here in North America. They describe it more humanoid, almost like a Neanderthal or Denisovan. And these creatures supposedly make fires and carry tools and can have very archaic clothing. So it's a possibility these might be maybe surviving Neanderthals or Denisovans that still persist in these remote mountainous areas. From from up north, maybe. Yeah. What what you what was the name of that uh, story? Like what do uh, they call them? The Almas. Uh, A L A L M A S, or they also call them the Almasti. Okay. What are like were these like Bigfoot like creatures? Like, of course, people talk about like the Yeti and maybe. Yeah. I can't really think of any other big names a lot not a lot of people know about, but you have like other Bigfoot like creatures in around the world. You have the mm -hmm. Yaren of, the, of China, the Wild Man, the Abiyawi of, of Australia, which is described as like a hairy humanoid like creature. South America is one place that people don't know a lot about that there's a lot of like Bigfoot like creatures seen in South America. Yeah, yep, there's no video of anything because there's nothing there. Yeah. Cause it's Really, because it's mostly just jungle and woods. Uh, it's not built up like hey, we have here in, here in North America. Right. We have remote areas that most likely people really haven't been to. It makes you question what else. What <laughs> yeah, that's like. that's a topic I'd like to research. South American cryptids, because... There's, there's nope. a plenty of them. You have the Mapengari, the Sisimate, uh, Monogande. There's people that still believe maybe giant ground sloths still persist for long Patagonia. Because there's stories of people finding like 
what we call di uh, what we call megatherium skin impressions, but it's still bleeding. And it okay. was like letter, and we're like, wait, if it's new, this isn't ancient. So what? How did you kill this thing if this was supposedly dead ten thousand years ago? So a good friend of mine is gonna really take this hard, but we have to break it to him. Um, you mentioned sloth man. Tell me what you know about giant sloth man, because I need to research that. That's very important. Giant ground sloths. Uh, yeah. What they are pretty much are, think of a sloth, but the size of a bear to the size of an elephant. The, <laughs> it's truly a creature that you would not want to have encountered. Uh, these are what you call xenarctans. Xenarctans are also related to modern sloths, armadillos, uh, anteaters, all these weird South American models. Okay. All right. That's that's very, I love that one. I, I'm going to have to do something on that. Um, yeah. And again, you know, you, anybody that hears this, anyone you know, like if there's a topic, like I, I say I have to talk about and anybody wants to talk about it, like they're welcome to reach out. So like the giant sloth man, is that what you called him? Uh, giant ground sloth. Giant ground sloth. Yeah. I, I need to talk to somebody about that because that's a story I need to have on here. If not for any audience, which I think people would like it, but if yeah. not for them, for my one friend, because it, it'll be really bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, because there's all types of weird animals like that from our prehistory. Like. That's that's an interesting topic, definitely. Yeah. Um. So let's come back home. Like, Give us some more of like the things in like America, United States. Like, Give me some more... Uh, info on that. Of course. Heck, in North America, you have a truly a menagerie of different griffins in around the country. You have what we like to call dire dogs or cryptic canines. People describe giant wolf like creatures or even uh, 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 hyenas seen in North America. You have people that see the dog man, of course, the bipedal canine phenomenon. But like humanoids, thunderbirds, you have the litany of different lake monsters seen around the world, uh, seen around the country. You have a, such a phenomenon called bat squatch. People describe uh, what we call flying humanoids, which is think of a person with wings, is what people are seeing, but it's covered in fur or like it's fuzzy some way. So people call it bat squatch. You have sheep squatch or the Appalachians or, or the goat man phenomenon. People pretty much describe seeing like satyrs from uh, Greek mythology. And this is taking place around the country. And then you have, of course, weirder cryptids, like, of course, Wendigo, Skinwalker. You have all these weird different creatures seen around the world, seen around the country. And, but there are certain ones that might correlate to prehistory. Like, uh, there's some people that will quote seeing uh, saber tooth cats in the modern day. Like, the prehistoric saber tooth. Mm -hmm. and, where's, and where's that mostly coming from? Usually up north, maybe Montana, the Dakotas. Uh, okay. People, like big so countries. rural, very That's rural true. areas, yeah. Yeah. But okay. the thing that I kind of have an issue with sometimes with that is that Smilodon Fatalis, the one that they're describing, would only have killed the largest of uh, prey because it was specialized for what we call megafauna, uh, giant, uh, giant animals, like uh, maybe horses, uh, they would kill mammoths, they would kill uh, especially bison and camelids. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but in modern day North America, we only really have horses, bison, maybe elk, and moose. That's the only really animals they would probably hunt. Yeah. But people are still describing seeing these creatures. So it makes you question if these animals are around, what are they killing? Because a smilodon, a smilodon could not kill a deer. They're not uh, they're not fast enough, and they're, they just wouldn't be enough sustenance. And their even their fangs, the giant saber teeth they had, wouldn't work on an animal like that. It was just they're just too big. The smile on itself, and the prey is just too small. So, do they like the people there? Do they not have anything otherwise? I mean, well, uh, like uh, feline, like they have, like of course. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, if they say that that you know animal wouldn't be able to survive on deer. Well, how's it survive then? Yeah, that's the thing that make, uh, 
brings up the question with it. Like, are people misidentifying a known species? Are they maybe making something up, which some people do? That's right. something that you find in this field. People do try to get attention. Oh, I'm sure. Or, yeah, and that's and that's not what this show's about. But this show is yeah. just about you know getting it out there and let yeah. people make their own opinions. But because really. Yeah. All we want is just to hear about it, cause you know we like hearing everything. So, <laughs> yes, like I'm very similar to you. Like I, I like putting out the information out there. Like yeah. I tell people, it's not my job to make you believe something. I'm not. Yeah. I'm yeah. not uh, some type of like religious person like that. I'm not gonna make you believe this, cause right. it's about evidence. It's about data. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the evidence, and it's your conclusion. Well, hey, I'm that's just- perfect. That's what this show is. So we have the same message exactly. You yeah. said it perfectly. Let them make their own conclusion. We're just giving the info. Yeah, and even if your conclusion is different from mine, I love when that happens because I'm like, okay, how do you come to that conclusion? Yeah, I love it. It shows you methodology and how someone thinks, and that's I love knowing how they got to their conclusion because this is just a little interesting fact about me. I'm also an educator. I teach uh, school kids. So okay. when I get them, when they get the wrong answer, I love when that happens because I want to see how they got there. Yeah, and how they got there is even more important than the answer itself. Hey, Ryan, we're like teaching here. We're teaching our audience yeah. about all these amazing topics. Um, maybe if we're talking about cryptids, uh, one cryptid that I do talk a good amount about is I don't know if talk I don't know if text brought it up, but the dog men. He he did. He mentioned that that is was I think he said fifteen years old. Yeah, uh, and that's where it started. So I don't know much about Dogman. He told me a little bit, but not much. So give me in the audience something about Dogman. Of course, Dog Dogman is a cryptid that's been seen here in North America, but it's a fairly recent cryptid. It's what I like to call neo cryptid. It's own its original sightings only saw it in the back in the nineteen eighties. Okay. But some will report that it all, went all the way back to the 1800s. That's some reports. Because there's different names for this creature. Uh, the main creature when we think of a dog man is the Beastenberry Road. And it's a road out in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. And teenagers on this road, this rural road, reported seeing this weird, peculiar creature crossing roads. Uh, they would see, they report seeing like yellow eyes in the field at night, like a cornfield. But the yellow eyes are a foot apart at eight feet up in the air. And then when they saw the creature, they would report uh, one of the first eyewitnesses, what they, she's described was this. She was driving along Bray Road at night, and she saw this creature on the side of a road. But it was kneeling, like like a human. Like, you know how someone kneels down to grab something? Right. Yeah. It was kneeling down, and it, it had knees. It, had, it was like human. And it was eating like a Look like a raccoon or something, like a piece, something that died along the road. And when she got closer to it, it looked up at her. And what she described was not a human face. It was a canine's head, like a wolf head. And soon this creature got up on two legs and started walking towards her. And of course, like every whole movie, her battery started messing up. Her lights started going off. But soon enough, she honked a horn and this creature ran off into, into the corn, cornfield. And what these people are describing is pretty much... If you've ever watched uh, Van Helsing, the, the, the recent okay. one with Jackman, okay. the werewolf in that movie, backwards facing legs, uh, very muscular shoulders, broad shoulders, uh, large wolf like head, uh, pointed ears, black to gray fur. And these are what people are describing. It's pretty much like a real life werewolf. But I don't want to call them werewolves because we don't, <laughs> werewolves aren't real. Right. So the dog, the dog man can walk on two and four legs. Yeah, there's reporting, there's reports of them if they run, getting on four legs and running around. Or there's okay. some people that report seeing there's a large wolf until it gets closer, gets on two legs, and walks off on two legs. So it's it is about the size of a wolf, though. Yeah, wolf, or maybe even bigger. Like I uh, think some reports saying when it stands on two legs, it stands about maybe seven to eight feet tall. So okay. All right, I can picture that. All right. Yeah. Something that you just do not want to see in the woods. Where are most of the, uh, like, is Dogman more prevalent in some places more than others? Yes. There's, uh, the, 
in the Midwest, Wisconsin, Ohio, uh, Michigan, that place. Because Michigan Dog Man, that's another big, big one I've seen up in Michigan. But also, if you've ever heard of the Land Between the Lakes out in Kentucky and Tennessee. No, no I haven't. It's a national park out there, and it's called Land Between the Lakes because it's two lakes, and it's the lar- it's the, America's largest in, well, like, inland, uh, like what Florida is. It's a peninsula? Of that. Oh, okay. Peninsula, okay. Large peninsula. And reports saying, people report seeing this weird bipedal creature out there that has a dog's head. And supposedly, I believe, the story goes back in the eight nineteen eighties. A family, the, the story goes, a family of, I believe it was like Amish people were out there camping. And this family of four, of man, woman, and their two kids, were killed by it, were killed by something. What they were killed by, we did not know. Supposedly, the crime scene consisted of the man being found in, a, in his RV, ripped apart. The woman was found later on, parts screwed around. A, Someone was found in a tree, and the story goes that something on two legs came out of the woods, out of the river bottoms, and attacked his RV. And what the creature is, we do not know, because there's no living eyewitnesses. Well, supposedly there's someone who said that he was there and he saw it, but I'm not sure about that story. What just what was the um, that was in Kentucky? You said yes. I'm going to have to look into that because that's like a place I would go, you know, just to, well, I could like go research it there, you know? Yeah. And the land, um, if you look up Land Between the Lakes uh, Massacre or Land Between the Lakes uh, Dogman, that story would most likely come up. Is that one of the things that you had written about? I've, I've written about it before. I've done research into it because I almost went up to Tennessee a couple months ago for a conference, but I wasn't able to make it. Yeah, and it's literally a couple miles away from them. <laughs> it and just I'm didn't like, work out. Yeah, and I'm like, even if I did, a lot of people are like, oh, let's go camping. I'm like, I'm not gonna go camping in a tent in the yeah. if that if this thing is supposedly out there. I, I wouldn't be there at night. I know that. I probably I don't know now about day, but I wouldn't be there at night. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. Well, hey, I'm. Uh, I'm happy we had you on because this worked out perfectly. So let's, where else can we go? Take us on a journey here through wherever we left off. If you have something good, let's go there. Of course. Uh, I'm trying to think maybe another interesting cryptid that supposedly we see in North America is my correlate to prehistory is giant bear sightings. Up in Alaska and Canada, they have sightings of giant bears. But these we, bears... You know, I mean, you know what helps that argument is the fact that it's always in these remote areas where I don't think anyone can really say that something hasn't been looked at, you know? Yeah. So and that's, I like that. Yeah. And it's areas that you, you can kind of believe it. Like, there's areas when you drive across North America, or even if you, like, you fly, you mm-hmm. fly to like the Pacific Northwest or oh, Alaska or Canada, when you look out the plane window, you see it them those miles and miles of green forest you can imagine right. what is down there there could be stuff down there that no one's ever seen before <laughs> that's but, valid we're gonna scare a lot of people <laughs> we're gonna scare a lot of people scared me a little bit there i'll tell you <laughs> yeah because it's makes you wonder because there's stuff in this world that we just don't understand and it's kind of the apotheosis of, hum- of humankind we always believe we know everything we always believe we know what's over that next hill. We know what's in that lake. Well, what if we don't? It's the it's the message of science to find the unknown. Well, you know, you know going. what I like thinking about that. Another, I'm sure I didn't make it up, but I like it. Like a redwood tree. Like there's not many of them left, but there's, you know, they're left. They're not anywhere else. Well, yeah. what about what about these things? They're the best that's left, but they're you know it's not the last of them. Yeah, and that's just. How and that's also how nature works. Yep. Animals and and creatures like that are all survivors. So if they're here in prehistory, why aren't they here now? Like there's a something I always like to bring up, especially with the with the Bigfoot argument. For the longest time in our history, we were never alone. There's always another human-like species living alongside us. Right? Mm-hmm. If it's Neanderthals, Homo floresiensis, Homo denisova, 
or even Gigantopithecus, which was a giant ape in and of itself. We were never alone until the last maybe 10,000 years. But for 2.5 million years, there was another human species. So why would the modern day be any different than 2.5 million years worth of our evolution? It's only just because we, we don't believe there's anything else out there. But with Bigfoot and or the Almasty and all these other cryptids I've seen around the world, I don't believe we're all of them. They are other maybe human-like species living alongside of us. They might be, and maybe they're just so intelligent that they hide away from us. They know we are truly the apex predator on this planet. So I, why wouldn't you stay away from humans? We destroy the environment. We kill animals for no reason. So these or, other, or their brains didn't develop like ours or something. They're just way behind. Or you know, who knows what it is? But yeah, and that that's why there's so few of them. Yes, because it's just all oh, it kind of depends on. Maybe even how just how intelligent you are, they are, like you said. Like mm-hmm. maybe they are just so below our intelligence that they don't know any better than just to stay away from us. Yeah. Us. yeah. Or maybe they're so so intelligent that they know they they purposefully know to stay away from us. So it just all depends on these creatures. But it's just kind of a thing I always talk about is that we just we were never alone in our history, so why would we be we be alone now with other human like species? And possibly with with Bigfoot and in these other cryptids, we aren't. There are other human-like species, or at least human primate species, that are very similar to us out there alongside. See, I, I'll tell you what. You give a lot of valid points that it'd be it'd be hard to make an argument against. You know, I mean, that you know that's why we're here. But you know, when you come on with a story like that, it's hard to hard to make it. You know, not believe because there was nothing in there that was not potential yeah. you know ryan yeah oh boy well, <laughs> i i mean that was just kind of a taste of what it's going to be you know so i just wanted to kind of you know let us touch on topics like we did we i think we went nailed it out the park man we get we got a lot of good stuff there of course uh, the alpas and the sloth are two that i definitely want to visit with someone sometime yeah <laughs> Maybe some other things too. We'll have to listen back, but yeah, that yeah. was fun. So, thank you for going there with us. Uh, tell tell them one more time where they can find you, and then we'll just talk about some other things. Gotcha. If you want to find me in my research, uh, you can check out on YouTube the Crypto Chronicles podcast. That's my personal podcast. I also have a book out called the, uh, called Cryptids of the World. This book is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Just look up Cryptids of the World and my name, Ryan the Roots, and you should be able to find it. If you awesome. think the if you think these creatures are amazing, there's even more fantastical cryptid scene around the world that I write about in that book. So if you well, want that information, go seek it. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I wanna I wanna get that book and then I wanna have you back on some of those topics in that book, all right? Of course. All right, one more time. What's the title of the book and where can people find it? Gotcha. Cryptids of the World. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, High Price Books, pretty much anywhere where books are sold, you can find it. All right, by Ryan Edwards. All right, yes. awesome. I'm gonna get that, sir. You let me know. I'll I'll, I'll read that book and I'll bring you back on. <laughs> um, cool. So from there, let's just go, you know, down rabbit holes like we talk about on the show. Okay. Um, so what? Tell me something and tell. You know, if it's something I like, I'll talk about it as well. Or don't like, I'll tell you I don't like it. But tell me about like a movie or a TV show that, you know, recently and it's something that you enjoyed and about something about it. A TV show I did watch recently is I'm a big Star Wars fan. Okay. I'm watching the new like Star Wars show and or I've been watching that recently. Okay. Uh, thumbs cool. up or thumbs down. All okay. right. All right. It's All right. Good. We- so far. It, does it follow, you know, a similar path to like all the other Star Wars, you know, films and series and things like that? Just sure, down it's a, di- okay. Yeah, but it's kind of it's different because it almost has more of a realistic quality sometimes. Like sometimes I was watching an episode the other day, and it's almost like you feel like it's not a Star Wars show. You feel like it's almost like a crime drama or like a military drama, and it kind of it doesn't take you out of the reality. It puts you even more into the Okay. All right. That's a good review. Yeah, that's a good review. Uh, cool. Uh, what else is going on? Um, 
What you got? What do you got? Any funny stories? You got any embarrassing things you want to think would be funny to talk about? Anything? How I got spotted up by a llama, which I was such a funny story I could tell. Well, um, like, go ahead, give us the llama story. Of course, uh, I was going to Alabama for the first annual Alabama Bigfoot Conference. And okay, where's Pen- that? Where's that at? Where's that at? A place called Oxford, Alabama. It's like a long I twenty, uh, okay. right in the foothills of the Appalachians. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you for that. But go ahead. Back to <laughs> back to the story of course and of course like to get get from like texas to uh alabama you have to go to take i-10 myself okay. go to birmingham montgomery all those big cities well big cities are not really that big honestly right <laughs> i have my cousin with me because like i'm like i'm not gonna take this drive by myself like if i do that i'm gonna end up on the side of a ditch somewhere because I felt yeah so yeah yeah so they came with me and like well okay well we got like a couple extra hours we were in Birmingham. I it was outside of Birmingham, and we saw like a safari park. And they're like, "Hey, why don't we go?" I'm like, oh, "Are you sure? Like, I don't know. If, I don't know the place. Like, do we trust it?" She's like, "Yeah, come on." <laughs> so we went. I swear to God, when I went in there, like, you you ever been to like a safari park when there's like little drive-in parks and there's all the animals and all that? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there, it was like a list of different animals. Like, okay, camels, uh, zebra, horses, this, this, this. I'm like, okay, cool. We can see all this. We first drive in, nothing but llamas. It's like a herd of like 50 llamas is controlling the whole area. I'm like, oh, that's why they have the llamas because llamas are angry animals. Like, they're, they're something that <laughs> that farmers keep around to protect other animals. Uh huh. And we're driving, and like, she's like trying to. She's in my passenger side. I'm driving, and there's a llama on our on our right on her side. And she's trying to pet it. This is my fault. I should have told her, like, hey, when once the ears go down, that's when they spit. <laughs> and but she didn't notice ears went down and it spat into the car. Oh gosh. But what's terrible is I thought it was gonna hit her. It aimed straight at me, hit me in the chest. <laughs> so like I had to go to the conference, had to like take off my shirt, get a new one on, because like, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, and I'm like, wait. This thing is on one side of the car. It was looking at you. It's not at me. Why? Yeah. Was it personal? Did it not like my hat? Like, what's going on here? Like, and just you know, out of the kindness of your heart, you went to that thing, and then that's what that's what happened. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not going to feed you now. I drove off. And then oh, whenever we saw all of she always rolled up the window, like, ah, oh, no, I'm scared. I'm like, don't worry. Like, this number. I'll tell you, too. she's got one on you there, man. She's got one on you. Yeah. And like, oh. It was funny too because like that this place also had camels like behind like a gate. I'm like, yeah, camel spit too. She immediately like made, made sure that the windows were rolled up, made sure the doors were locked. I'm like, why are you making sure the doors locked? They don't have thumbs. They're not gonna unlock the door. I'm like, what you doing? <laughs> yeah, what's the? <laughs> it's, like, it's like in the whole. It's like when like there's like a the movie and they lock the door. It's like what? It's a yeah. rare, what locking the door? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, maybe they can open the doors. Who knows, man? But that's funny that it's all the movies, all the commercials you see, it's always locking the door. Yeah, maybe a killer. I can understand that because it's, it's, it's a person. Yeah. But still, you don't realize when you're in a car, you're also surrounded by glass. Oh, Breakable glass. So, those people don't think. <laughs> funny. Every movie you're going to see now, you're going to think of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, what about, are you a cook? Do you cook anything? Sometimes, every so often, I also, on my, uh, I have two jobs. I work as an educator, and also I work in like a local restaurant. But I don't oh. do anything. I do like expo. I, I check the food, make sure it's all good. Okay. Yeah. So I guess like my what I want is like I'm, I don't know what I'll ever do with it. I'll put it on Twitter or whatever. But I'm gonna have like a lewd cookbook, and I like guests to like share like a something that you make and you make it a lot but because you're good at it like something okay. that we can put in the lewd cookbook well, one thing i do is it's almost like a split breast alfredo kind of i do sometimes okay we'll talk make, all right like, usually make like an alfredo sauce and just uh chicken and all that stuff but it's just certain, certain ways i make stuff all right that would be a nice little thing for the book you know obviously we'll, we'll put a little flair on it but a chicken yeah. chicken alfredo i like it you know, when did that book come out and has it, you know, has it been up, been down? Like, I, I want it to go up for you. So what's going on? When did it come well, 
Uh, Crypt Desert World came out last August. It's my first book I've ever written. Because okay. uh, it's the first one out. Uh, it's been doing pretty well. Like what primarily the sales I get are from when I go to conferences, when I go to events, author events, things like that. Those are usually where I make most of the sales. Okay. Like I've gone to Texas Bigfoot Conference, Southeast Texas Bigfoot Conference, the Alabama Bigfoot Conference. A lot of Bigfoot conferences here in the South. It's kind of surprising. Okay. And then I go to schools and I lecture at schools and I sell the book at schools. It's doing pretty well. There's a couple of reviews out for it. Well, uh, yeah, it's maybe it's building, building too. You know, it's only been out for that long. You know, people don't yeah. know about it. So, like, I'm with glad. me, it's mostly about the pro- promo. Like, I don't care if, even if it sells, if it gets my name out there and people like have a name recognition, that'd be awesome. Because I'm yep. just, well, hey, I'm happy I had you on because that's, that's exactly what I want here. It's, you know, hey, I don't have an audience yet. You know, I'm building shows, I'm building things. Just yeah. like, you know, I'm getting your message out. I want people to come on, feel like they can get their thing out and, you know, that's how we kind of build the show, you know? Yeah. So yeah. That, that that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Like, uh, one big thing back in the 70s, Pennsylvania had a lot of Bigfoot sightings. And what's weird is Bigfoot sightings correlated with UFO sightings. So it made a lot of people question if there's a correlation between Bigfoot and UFOs. Like, oh, my I gosh. Think? I've never yeah. heard that angle. Yeah. I've never <laughs> heard that angle. I like that a lot. There's yeah. a possible correlation, UFOs and Bigfoot. Possibly. We mean Poss- it's, a yeah. of, it's a possibility because there's one story. It was a father and son. This is back in the 1970s in, uh, near Kecksburg, uh, Pennsylvania, near Kecksburg. And what they described, they saw two large human-like creatures crossing a field and this big red orb in the distance. The man gets afraid. He shoots his gun at the, this creature but instead of hearing like the hit of a gunshot, he, he described it almost like a metal noise hitting it, almost like it hit metal. But then the creature looks at him and walks away into the woods, walking toward this giant red orb. And this made investigators think maybe all these Bigfoot aliens, are they being abducted by aliens? We don't know. Because this is a couple years after what we call the Kecksburg incident. And the Kecksburg incident is when a supposed UFO crashed in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. And this UFO was described as almost like an acorn, like a shape, almost like a bell-shaped thing. And then suddenly, a couple years afterwards, you have a flap of UFO sightings and also Bigfoot sightings. That place you mentioned in Pennsylvania, is that the place that had the... They said, like, the underground well was going to explode or something? Or is that not real? Counting, counting. I think that might be another location. Okay, different. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, man, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I'm thinking. Audience is thinking. We're good. We're good. Uh, personal note. Hmm. So you told me from Texas, and I had a topic written down about Texas. Of course. I need, I need your opinion because there's two sides to this. <clears throat> so wild boars, you know, animal activists, you, you shouldn't harm animals. People in Texas need to control the population of wild boars because they're bad for the environment. Yeah. What's your What's your stance on wild boars? I see it. Wild boars, the pig species, destroy them, kill them because they are invasive species. That one species has gotten up to a, do- a couple of dozen species in Texas, indigenous species, on the endangered species list. So is it, almost, is it taking all of their like resources like for the other resources, destroying land? It, they do millions of dollars of dollars of, of property damage each year because what they do is, especially in cow fields, they make holes and then a cow might step into it and break its leg. And then, oh, okay. Yeah. So that makes sense because the reason I brought that up was, you know, everybody goes into those rabbit holes on YouTube and my rabbit hole was wild boar hunting. Yeah, <laughs> and they showed them like from up in helicopters with machine guns. Yeah, and they showed them um, with the fenced-in area where they bring them in. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie; they were, you know, I watched them. I'd like to talk to somebody that had those videos, but you know, then there's the other people who are on the other side of that, which I understand their perspective. Yeah. But I'm with you. I mean, you have to because they're taking all the resources from the land. I mean, yeah. Like, there was a former teacher of mine back in high school, and he was a former uh, Marine sniper, and he owned land out in uh, South Texas. 
and yeah. he had a bull problem. What he would do is he would have a, a feeder, like a deer feeder, that old wild pigs going there. Mm-hmm. He would literally have C4 at the bottom of it and shoot it from 500 yards and just blow them all up. Yeah. I'm like, uh, that might sound extreme, but you do you. Like, it's your land, you do you. A little extreme there, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, he was yeah, trained in that. He was trained in that field. That yeah. was his profession, and he used it in the only way he could to control his land. You yeah. gotta give the man credit. Yeah, I gave him credit because, like, I was, I was seeing like some of the videos of him doing it. I'm like, wow, like, you made that shot. And he's like, yeah, that, that's an easy shot for me. I'm like, okay. Oh, I didn't know. There, oh, I didn't know there were videos. What's that called? Do you know? Uh, that one, I think, is something that he personally made. But honestly, if you look up like Texas uh, bull hunting or Texas like bull. Uh, extermination, you'll probably find stuff okay. like that. Just people, okay. like, people do anything to kill them. They blow yeah, them up. If, if there's like, yeah, if there's one guy like that, I want to, I want to get a hold of him and see if he'll come on the show. Cause that would be a heck of a topic to talk. You know, yeah. I've seen that, you know, shout out to a show I know is like the Rogan, you know, he talks about people yeah. to do things like that. Yeah. That's okay. where I heard that. There's people that, that steal the uh, spear hunt bull. Like, yeah. Go hunting with a spear. I'm like, Okay, you're you're a different type of person. I don't want to mess with because like you know you're crazy or you're stupid, or well, probably both. Because a bull can kill someone. Like people don't realize that their tusks, if they get you in the right spot, you're gonna bleed out in less than a. Less oh, than I'm a sure. Time. Yeah, definitely dangerous. I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> uh, so do you play the Mega Millions or the Powerball? I do not. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here's the question I'll ask you though. So if it's one yeah. billion dollars. And you bought a dollar ticket, and you hit it. What would the first thing you do with that billion dollars be? Well, of course, my first couple of steps would be get a lawyer, make sure no one knows about it, uh, make sure there are certain uh, stakes into it. I'll put like, okay, this can only be used at this much, and there's certain stuff you don't do with it. Of course, I would probably keep it in my own home. That might sound idiotic, but I would. <laughs> but then I would only put so much of it in my bank account. Or I'll give several bank accounts. Because not a lot of people realize this. If you win the lottery, and it's a lottery tax on it, I think it's about 60% tax on it's it. It's a lot of money. Yeah. So what you do if you win the lottery, you put 10000 in one bank account. Not a 10000 in a bank account. 10000 Because if you put more than $10,000 in a bank account at once, Bank immediately immediately looks into it, and they immediately start taxing you. Yeah. Like one time, a friend of mine they won some money. They got a couple thousand dollars, and they gifted someone like maybe twenty thousand. But the gift tax in America is seventy five percent. No, so that person only got maybe five less than five thousand dollars at the end because of that gift tax. So, like with the lottery tax, there's certain ways that you have to pay taxes on it, of course. But there's other ways around being charged more for it. Thank See, you. that's, oh my gosh, that is just valuable information to everyone because you need to get a lawyer, like you said. There's things yeah. there that I didn't even know, so I'm glad my plan was to get a lawyer too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Don't let your family know. Don't let your friends know. But it's like, yeah. it's like if I win the lottery, I'm not going to tell anyone, but there might be changes you might notice. Like, you just yeah. might notice. I would love to talk to a Powerball lawyer. I want a Powerball lawyer to come on the show. Yeah. In case I win, can you you got me? Like in case I win, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a hashtag. Uh, Powerball lawyer wanted. Let me know. Yes, Let me Powerball know. lawyer, Mega Millions lawyer, and if anybody wants free advertisement, you know I'm not gonna pay you to be on the show, but I'd love to talk to you. Come yeah. on here, free advertisement for whoever watches it, and I'll put Mega Millions, <laughs> Powerball, whatever. That, that'll grab your attention. So, yeah, so I'm going to put that tweet out there, and I'll put it all the places, but I want that Powerball lawyer because <laughs> we need it, Ryan. One of us is going to win one day, and we don't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all luck, my friend. All right, man. Well, hey, I'm, I'm about out of things. I mean, I have a bunch written down, but I don't want to look too far into it. Do you have anywhere else you'd like to uh, go from where we were or any new topics or anything that you have to uh, chat uh, I'll give you like five different cryptos. Mokela well, Mbembe, supposedly a living soul pod out seen in the, out in Africa. Uh, Dali Khali, uh, 
Queensland Tiger, supposedly a tiger-like uh, cat or marsupial seen out in Australia. The Sisimite, supposedly a giant human-sized uh, spider monkey seen out in South America. The Ahul, supposedly a giant bat the size of a person that can cave people off. Where's that one at? Uh, down in Java. Okay. And then you have, uh, I'll bring up, kind of a scary one that maybe will bring attention. Yes. Black humanoids. Imagine okay. a demon out of, like, the Bible. Imagine, like, a person with wings that supposedly is just truly demonic and scary and can supposedly comes, grabs people, and just flies off into the night. Flying humanoids. That's like a cryptid that I write about. Interesting. I love it. I love it. Ryan, that was <laughs> awesome, man. I'm glad yes. you joined us. Um, I, it might take me a few a few days to get this one together because I, I want to move some things around, but I thought we did excellent, sir. So thanks cool. for joining us. And I know I already made you do it a couple times, but one more time, tell the audience where you're at, and then I'll kind of end the show and we'll be done. Of course. Uh, you look up my name on Facebook, Ryan Edwards. Uh, I should pop up there. I also have a website called decrypticchronicles.net. There I have my podcast links, my book, and also my social medias. If you look up uh, the Cryptic Chronicles on face on YouTube, my podcast and my channel will show up. We're just growing. We have barely passed 100 subscribers, but I am wanting to grow from here. I try to put content out every week. If you guys want to go check that out, please do so. Yeah, we are have, going to. Yep. Of course. I also have the book out. You can find it on Amazon, Boston, Noble, wherever. So just look me up. Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. So if you're interested in cryptids, if you're interested in just the unknown, just go check me out and I'm, I'm there. If you want awesome. to contact me, please do so. Well, awesome, Ryan. Thank you very much because that's perfect. It's a, you know, you ended up being the perfect guest because this is an invitation to all those people out there like you who, you know, want to share their story, want to talk about things and understand that it's an opinion. Not everyone has it. If, if, you know, people don't like it. Oh, well, just to share yeah. things, you know, yeah. so a perfect little segue till the end of the show. And uh, thank you, sir. And thank you to any audience that stuck with us here. I thought we had a pretty uh, extraordinary conversation, but, you know, each his own. Um, you'll find some more episodes coming out. We got a lot of topics we're working on. Uh, anything and everything is welcome. You know, obviously we want to keep it somewhat you know, mature, you know, I don't think maybe some high school kids can listen to it, but <laughs> it's an adult audience. Um, but yeah, we're just here to have fun, hear the stories and, you know, everyone come to their own conclusions. You don't have to like what we like. You don't have to think what we think. So okay. perfect. Uh, uh, this society is not a welcome one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, sir. Appreciate, appreciate the audience that listened. We'll talk to you on the next one. Of course. See you guys. All right. We'll see you.